On my memo tonight, I look at lockdowns, especially the one that is currently being implemented in five counties, including this one we are in. Now, two weeks ago, we first had the term disease infested zones used by the president to describe these five counties, namely Nairobi, Kiambu, Machakos, Kajiado and Nakuru. That term is particularly jarring, but it is not my point tonight. An increase in COVID-19 infections and deaths in the country, especially in these areas, led to the announcement of a raft of measures, including a nighttime curfew, closing down of eateries and other entertainment joints, leaving only takeaway services, suspension of all events, as well as congregational worship in churches, mosques and temples. Now, these measures were criticized almost immediately by many of those whose livelihoods had been affected. Hoteliers, workers in the transport and entertainment sectors, as well as others whose work was adversely affected, demonstrated asking for some concessions. But it is what it is, and the lockdown and curfew are here to stay, at least until further notice. Yani amri ya kutotoka nje na ile ya kutoingia na kutoka katika county tano zinasalia kwa sasa. There is no denying that the rate of infections was rising and that something needed to be done. There is also no denying that this government action is costing the economy millions of jobs and businesses and many families are feeling the pinch. That is why tonight we must get back to the basics of why such restrictions are imposed in the first place. Now when such measures are taken, the first objective is to slow down the infection rates and the need for hospitalization. But the other reason is to create room for the government to get its act together, to improve our capacity to deal with any future spikes. But here we are, two weeks later. What can we really say we have done during this period? Are we putting up more oxygen plants, considering the current massive shortage of the life-saving gas? Experts have told us that it costs between 20 and 100 million shillings to build an oxygen plant. Is that too much to ask at a time when we have all made such a huge sacrifice? I digress, but this makes me think of the 2 billion shillings the president told us is lost every day to corruption, and how many such plants that money could build. What about ICU beds? Tales of people losing their lives as their relatives went around looking for space in different hospitals have become very common. Are there any plans to increase the ICU facilities across the country as we deal with the lockdown? And what are we doing to make sure the zone that is seemingly so prone to COVID-19 spikes is better protected? Why are we not seeing a massive vaccination drive in the five counties? And what will have changed when the lockdown is lifted? After all, you're not even sure how many people are sneaking back and forth between this zone and the rest of the country. In my opinion, by now the government should have compiled statistics to show the effectiveness of the lockdown and the varied curfew from when the first measures were announced last year. For instance, when the curfew started at 7 p.m., what was the effect on the COVID-19 prevalence rate then? Was there a difference when the curfew was 10 p.m. or 8 p.m.? Statistics should drive decision making, not knee-jerk reactions. After all, the experts have told us to get used to these waves that will keep coming from time to time. Right now, there are many parents in the lockdown zone who are already wondering what will become of the school calendar. Is there anyone thinking about that in government? If so, is there anything being done in schools within the zone to ensure the already chaotic calendar is not disrupted any further? In life, there are often trade-offs, and this lockdown is one of those. But if we are unable to make use of this period to better prepare for the next wave, then I dare say all those businesses and jobs will have been lost in vain and the many sacrifices made by doctors and nurses will have meant absolutely nothing. That is my memo.